out of two choices. So she says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. We'll work for you. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. You do all that work and then just leave us.
share worship with all of you on the second Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Jennifer Michael, a pastor here at St. Timothy, and it is a glorious day. We should just all stand up and walk outside and have church outside, right? <laughs> in the shade, but yes, it is. <laughs> but then we would miss out on the lovely choir, which is a great treat. Even in the summertime, they are, they are with us, and we are grateful. And speaking of the choir, I want to call it your attention. Their call to worship will begin, and the choir will sing through at once, and then the congregation is invited to sing on the repeat. So just please make note of that, so when we get to that part, uh, you'll, you'll know what to do. There are, <coughs> if you are visiting with us or here for the first time, there are instructions about communion and what to do. Sometimes it's a little confusing because churches do it differently, so be sure to look at that in the bulletin. And also, you can either scan the QR code on the back of the bulletin or fill out one of the visitor's cards. We would really love to share uh, welcome and, and greetings with you uh, at another time. So let's take a moment to center our hearts for worship, and then we will begin. Welcome again. <laughs> God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your Spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to new life, uh, to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A reading from Hosea. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. For all the wild animals of the forest are mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains, and the creatures of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, Think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you shall honor me. A reading from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. 
If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there a violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Praise be to God. I invite the children to come forward for the message. You'll need it eventually. 
Maybe more, but some of us more than others. <laughs> so let's say a prayer. You ready? Dear God. Dear, dear God. God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who shares his gifts with us. Who shares his gifts with us. Help us to receive those gifts. Help us to receive those gifts. So that we can share those gifts with others. So that we can share those gifts with others. Amen. 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 eat with tax collectors and sinners. But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. <coughs> and Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today's gospel lesson begins with Jesus acting scandalously once again by eating with tax collectors and sinners. We actually have no idea whether Matthew the tax collector or any other Matthew for that matter wrote this account but because this is the only gospel that goes beyond naming Matthew early church leaders wondered if this was Matthew's way of identifying himself for careful readers. We don't know. We do know, however, that this is the scene that clearly identifies the heart of Jesus' mission. He has come to seek the lost. He has come to extend God's love to those who are considered by their peers and likely by themselves to be unlovable. He has come to heal the brokenhearted, to restore the outcasts, and gather together all those who have been scattered and shattered by the trials and tribulations of this life. And for this reason, it is also the scene that points out what, Jesus, what, what gets Jesus into so much trouble. In the chapter previous to this text, when Jesus made bold to forgive and heal a paralytic who had been brought to him, we see that the religious authorities are offended by Jesus' audacity to forgive sin. 
And now matters only get worse, as he doesn't simply perform some religious rite of absolution, but actually treats all the people he meets, including those the good synagogue folks like the Pharisees would consider immoral. Jesus treats them with profound respect. He treats them, that is, as if they weren't the awful sinners the Pharisees know them to be, but instead as precious children of God. For a tax collector didn't look anything like the good people who work for the IRS today, but rather named those Jews who worked for the Romans to exact a tax from their neighbors, a tax that simultaneously made those tax collectors wealthy and then supported the Roman occupation. And similarly, sinners doesn't merely describe those who have fallen short of God's ideal, but rather is reserved for the worst of the worst, the bandits, prostitutes, thieves, and more. All of which means that Jesus is deliberately seeking out those who normally are considered beyond the pale of decent society in order to treat them with the respect and dignity they deserve as God's beloved children. And so he eats with them. He accepts their hospitality and honoring, and honoring, he honors them with his presence. And in this way, he names and identifies them as worthy of God's love, attention, and forgiveness. And it drives the religious authorities of the day, drives them absolutely bananas. But Jesus won't be deterred. He isn't particularly concerned about either the spiritual or material welfare of the Pharisees because, quite frankly, they're doing just fine. He has come to seek out the lost in order to demonstrate God's intention to find and redeem and to love all of God's children, even those in the most dire of circumstances. Can you imagine what our world might look like if we did the same? In the divisiveness and chaos of today's world, one cannot help but yearn for a transformation akin to the compassionate ways in which Jesus treated the tax collectors and outcasts of his time. If we were to adopt such a disposition in our interactions and societal structures, the world would undoubtedly undergo a profound metamorphosis. Imagine a world where the marginalized and despised are not cast aside, but embraced with open arms. In this realm, tax collectors, who often symbolize greed and exploitation, would be met not with disdain, but with understanding and the possibility for redemption. The outcasts, those labeled as societal misfits or burdened with the weight of prejudice, would find solace in a community that extends its loving hand rather than shunning them. In this sort of vision, the foundations of justice and mercy would be firmly laid. The affluent and the powerful would recognize their responsibility to uplift the weak and vulnerable rather than perpetuating cycles of oppression and greed. Greed, that insidious vice that corrodes the soul, would be replaced by generosity and compassion. The pursuit of wealth would no longer be an end in of itself, but a means to promote the common good. Through the lens of this transformative per perspective, our world would witness a revolution of love and sympathy. Communities would prioritize the needs of the destitute, the sick, and the marginalized. Suffering would not be ignored or dismissed as a personal failing, but seen as an opportunity for collective healing and support. The pursuit of power would be tempered by humility, and the desire for recognition would be eclipsed by a genuine concern for the well-being of others. So I ask you this morning, are we equipped to be those change agents in this world. As the pastor of St. Timothy Lutheran Church, I am inviting each and every one of you to consider who we can be together as a unique voice in Sumner County if we unite in seeking to serve outside of our church walls. Yes, walk outside those doors. Don't spend as much time in here. Outside those doors. And go out there and robustly advocate for those on the margins, 
those who are persecuted for their gender identity or sexual orientation, those who seek racial justice and, and equity, and those who are just simply in the greatest need of God's love. In a world shaped by the teachings of Jesus, the scales of equality would be balanced. Would be balanced. The barriers that divide us, be they race, gender, religion, or social status, would crumble underneath the weight of love and acceptance. Our judgments would give way to understanding, and our prejudices would be dismantled by empathy. No longer would we fear those who are different, for we would recognize the inherent dignity and worth of every human being. However, let us not fail into the trap of naivete. The road to such a world can be arduous and filled with resistance. The powers that thrive on inequality and injustice will not yield easily. Yet as a community of faith, claimed and called as Christ's disciples, we must Find the courage to challenge the status quo, to confront those oppressive systems that keep humanity in chains. In aspiring to create a world that mirrors the compassion of Jesus, we must be willing to risk our own comfort, to sacrifice our privileges, and to stand against the forces that perpetuate division and oppression. Let us heed the call to love our neighbors as ourselves and to strive for a world where the tax collectors and outcasts among us are embraced, redeemed, and made whole. May the legacy of Jesus, a champion of justice and equality, guide us as we endeavor to transform the present and create a future where all are treated with love, dignity, and respect that they deserve, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or physical or mental abilities. May we be the change that we want to see in this world. Amen. Amen.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. We pray, O oh God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or physical and mental abilities. Accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, who, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially those on our prayer list. Beverly Avon, the family of Don Blakemore, our retired rostered leaders, Mark, Sandy, Ed, Linda, Sally, Terry, Claude, David, Paul, Charlene, Ted, Sherry, Greg, Karen, Richard, Jane, Rod, Dave, Evelyn, Sandra, Fred, Cheryl, John, Carol, and all those we name aloud now are in the signs of our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Emmanuel Nun, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. The assembly is invited at this time to present other petitions. For our military, police, firefighters, emergency responders, and their families. We, pray we give thanks, O oh God, for Barnabas and all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. In our bulletin, you will see the sending of communion. We did this last night with Nancy, our, one of our visitation ministers. And I want to lift that particular ministry up because I don't know if it is at our time and talents uh, uh, fair that we're having after church today. Uh, but it is a very valuable ministry for the life of this church. In, in, in partnership with me, Nancy goes out and visits some of those that are not able to get to church or those who uh, are, are infirmed and you know, at the hospital or what have you. There's a variety of different circumstances. But it's a really wonderful and profound ministry that I would lift up to you if you have the time and interest. Uh, you, meet, you get to know people. It's, it's better than at church because you get to sit down in their homes. You get to see their pictures of their children and and hear the stories of their life, so I would really highly recommend it if you have the time. There are a bunch of uh, small group ministries that are highlighted in our Time and Talents Fair that is immediately following this. We have hot dogs and uh, cotton candy and a variety of other, I think popcorn? I'm not sure if there's popcorn. I think there is. But I do know that it's a lot of fun. They're like carnival games. We have a selfie booth, so we're going to take some, snap some pictures. Uh, I've got, I know it's surprising that I have seven feather boas in my drawer, but uh, I did. So I put those out, and uh, so we can like, have fun and uh, enjoy, the, enjoy the game. So please make your way to the Fellowship Hall, rather, or to Founders Hall, rather than out here in Fellowship. But we will have plenty of food there. Uh, let's see. Bluebirds are meeting this, this week. I know that Marilyn was hard at work getting everybody organized to meet at O'Charlie's at 1130 on Tuesday. So please RSVP her. Um, if you are able to, to, I know the deadline was yesterday, but I think she probably can figure it out uh, for today. And, uh, oh, Nashville Pride Parade. Yeah, I see I'm wearing my lovely stole that was a gift from our congregation as a celebration of our Reconciling in Christ anniversary in October. And, of course, this is Pride Month. We will be representing St. Timothy as well as the other Reconciling in Christ congregations in the Nashville Pride Parade. So if you have time, it's good fun. It's uh, a lot of love and, and, uh, and just energy and life, and so we would encourage you to make, to make plans to join us. The information is in the bulletin, uh, but please, please join us. Uh, it was wicked fun last year. And one of the really wonderful parts last year that really touched me and the reason why we do this is because I was, as I was walking, I'm wearing my This Pastor Loves You t-shirt uh, that's got the rainbow colors on it, and a young woman in the crowd pointed to me and said, you're the reason I still believe in church. And I, it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit, but it was, a, it was a profound moment to say that when we witness outside of our church walls for that kind of equity and that kind of, um, that kind of fairness, I think it really speaks volumes. Another uh, thing to mention, we'll, you'll be getting an email about this. It came in on Friday after a bulletin was already printed. But there will be a rally to advocate for stronger uh, gun reform legislation. In our prior to the special session that's coming up in August, and they have asked me to provide the prayer and also to make a statement. It's a press conference and rally. So if you have the time on Friday at 11, p 11 a.m. At, in Gallatin Square, please join me uh, to support uh, this this type of gun reform uh, gun reform legislation. Uh, I think it's very valuable uh, again to be of that voice in Sumner County. So. Please, uh, please make plans if you are able. Any other announcements for the life of the congregation? Seeing none, please rise for the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.
all are worthy of God's grace and love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.